remember waking and there was just doctors everywhere and my world was suddenly tilted um, like, a, like a boat and was spinning really fast and there was two of everything with my new dub vision um, and no one could understand me and I, I could not understand, I couldn't begin to fathom why people couldn't understand what I was saying because to me it made sense. I've never ever been so scared my whole life. It was hell. They made me a communication board, but it was so little and I wobbled so much that when I got function and I could point, I couldn't point at it. So I'd point out, I'm cold, but I was hungry. So I'd get bombarded with blankets. I just felt, um, I mean, for ages, felt so trapped. I felt really demeaned and isolated and forgotten. I think it was really, really hard, particularly because I was a young stroke survivor. But at the initial stages, I didn't want to be associated with stroke myself. I was, felt very lost because I couldn't go backwards to my old job and my old life, but there was nothing to go forward to. I think it took me about a year of grieving before I could feel that, you know, it does happen to young people and that it's, you know, it's even more important that that, that is spoken about because people aren't aware of that. All I knew is that I'd been told that I'd make a good recovery. I was young, I was fit. Throughout my recovery, the physical and emotional progression was never balanced. It was all about my physical progression. I felt like I'd gone back to being a baby. Like I had my dad feeding me, my mum was taller to me. Like, you know, it wasn't, it was not what I ever imagined my life to turn out like. I think as a stroke survivor, finding that I was a burden on the carers and, you know, when my mum or dad or any character a glimpse of, you know, um, they obviously we find it difficult. I, I hated that. I hated that I impacted their lifestyle. I think throughout that initial time to, to ensure that I stayed emotionally on track, um, it was really important. I think I found being around people, being around my friends, so I didn't feel like I missed out too much on that social. I didn't hang around with my parents too much. Probably 90% of my main group friends didn't have any um, link with disability, had never had a person who um, survived a stroke before other than their grandpa. I found that it was my role to tell them how to react and that it was okay for them to open up to me. I knew it was my role to make it easier for them. I wanted to try and sound stupid but elicit that grieving. Like, I wanted to go, it's okay not to know. During rehabilitation, I think I had weekly psychology. But at that point in my recovery, I couldn't speak. So I would often be wheeled up to her room and I remember just sitting there and I felt I was really not anti, but just really, um, I was like, what is the point of being here? Because I can't, all I can do is sit here and listen to her talk, saying that she understood and... I just wasn't in that mindset. 
I just think that that feeling of acknowledgement is so, so important. And I often say that to therapists that, you know, that that rapport building is crucial to any relationship that you have with that patient. In the um, initial stages of my recovery, I was offered antidepressants as I thought, you know, there were times in my rehabilitation that I was like, oh, I, can't, I really don't, I'm lacking energy and motivation to do this. But I think it was, uh, for me, it wasn't that I was feeling like I needed medication. I needed, it was a grieving, it was a normality. But I think a lot of the health professionals saw that as, something medication could fix and they could move on to the um, physical side. It wasn't until I started to do things again and do new things that I guess highlighted my strengths and not my weaknesses and I practised and practised that I, I guess, had a new identity, I wasn't the old M anymore, I had a new direction. And I could see how it was so, so difficult for me to hear my mum or carer say to me, oh, I saw a glimpse of the old M. And I knew that I couldn't meet that expectation, she was gone. So I was dealing with their denial and when I in a way accepted that as hard as it was, she wasn't going to come back. My life is full of me now, which it, once it lacked, I had nothing. I have nothing but the deficits that I had acquired from stroking. I could easily have gone a different path. I guess I'm not really... I'm not looking like I used to as at the future. I don't know what will happen. I just know that right now I'm content with where things are going. <laughs>